Vega 56's power consumption has been a major item of note during reviews, but we wanted to turn the watts into a more relatable metric, dollars. We did some simple calculations on power consumption versus the electricity cost of the average American household, which is apparently 12 cents per kilowatt hour, and put together a cost offset versus the GTX 1070. Some folks will pay a whole lot more than that based on region, so factor in your own costs as necessary. Here we're using the GTX 1070 reference as a baseline because we know it consumes less power than the RX Vega 56. We're able to then offset at a relative power consumption increase on the 56. So if you switch to the 56 from the 1070, we're looking at how much more you pay per year, not how much total you pay per year. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by CableMod. Already well known for their work in custom sleeved power supply cables, CableMod is now venturing into liquid cooler tube sleeving with their new AIO sleeving kits compatible with Corsair and NZXT as of now. Check the link in the description below for more information. This is all done pretty easily. In terms of video output, this is one of our simplest ones to make, but it gives some interesting data that is more relatable on a day-to-day -day basis. So the main thing here, we're looking at delta power consumption total for the system. We did do power testing at the PCIe cables, but not at the PCIe slot yet. And in testing, we found that the GTX 1070 currently draws more power through the PCIe slot than the RX Vega card does. And so that means it's kind of skewed. It ends up looking like Vega draws two times more power than the 1070, rather than a more realistic 20 to 30%, depending on workload. So we're looking at delta power through the wall and our accuracy therefore decreases as we approach idle, but it's pretty accurate as we go up into heavier workloads, particularly using 3D Mark Firestrike with a frozen screen where you basically get a fixed constant output both at the rails and at the wall. So easy enough to use that as our load benchmark baseline, which you can kind of use to assume render performance or gain performance. And we're measuring Vega 56 at 91 watts more power than the GTX 1070 when both are stock through this Firestrike benchmark. It's about nine watts more idle than the 1070 in our testing. And then it draws, 56 draws about 106 watts more power when overclocked versus the 1070 overclocked. These are all numbers from our review, so nothing new there. What is new is what we get into when we start calculating the different types of loads and the cost. So we're looking at idle 24 seven, which is obviously unlikely, but it helps us provide a baseline to extrapolate other numbers. Load 24 seven, also unlikely for probably most of you, but very realistic for folks who do rendering or maybe are miners. But in that case, you're doing a whole lot of tuning anyway, so you probably disregard our numbers. We're also looking at load for 12 hours a day, load for eight hours a day, and load for four hours a day. That would be gaming for four hours a day on average. For example, if you want numbers in between there, we've given you idle at 24 seven so that you can kind of guess where it would fall pretty accurately. And these are all calculated using the rest of the time as idle. So basically we're doing a big assumption here that if you buy these cards, you build a system, you're at you're playing games four hours a day, so you're leaving it idle 20 hours a day. Now, realistically, what you might actually be doing is either doing web browsing, which is pretty light GPU load anyway, so the idle number works, or turning it off, in which case your numbers will be a bit closer together than what we're showing here, though realistically not all that much because idle is just so insignificant it doesn't matter. We're talking nine watts extra here. So it's kind of irrelevant, but keep it in mind. So anyway, remember, higher is worse in these charts. Let's get through them. Let's start with a yearly cost and at 24 seven loads, which again, uncommon for most of you, this will be a worst case result for Vega improving as we go along. Relative to the GTX 1070 reference, the RX Vega 56 stock card would cost you an extra $96 per year, assuming 12 cents per kilowatt hour than the GTX 1070, which is illustrated at zero here, because again, it's a baseline. We're looking at deltas. Overclocking both increases the cost of ownership to $111 per year on the 56 over the 1070's overclocked cost, but that's 24-7 uptime. Assuming next that you play games or do work under load for 12 hours a day, seven days a week, cost of ownership versus the 1070 is now $53 per year stock versus stock, or $60 per year OC versus OC. At eight hours per day uptime, again, that would be something like gaming for some of them and maybe rendering or animation for some of them, with the other 16 hours spent idle, we see a cost increase of $38 more per year spent on the Vega 56 card than the 1070, or $43 when both are overclocked. Stepping down to four hours per day load, that cost is now $24 more per year stock, or 26 more when overclocked. If you turn off the PC and idle times, that number would decrease by $8 per year. 24-7 idle puts us at around $10 more than the GTX 1070 per year, 
for what it's worth, but if you're running a two-hour workload per day, that'd land you between the final two data points, which is probably realistic for a lot of gamers. And here's the cost of ownership over a period of three years, which we're assuming is the average upgrade cycle for most people, and assuming, again, 12 cents per kilowatt hour. Under 24-7 load and with stock settings, the Vega 56 card would cost you an extra $287 over three years, or an extra $334 when overclocked. For a more realistic workload, we can reveal the 12 and 8 hour metrics, where 8 hours per day load and 16 hours per day idle puts us at $115 over the GTX 1070 over a three year period, or $130 when both are overclocked. Going down to 4 hours per day changes those numbers to $72 and $79 stock and overclocked, respectively. 24 7 idle lands us at $28 extra over three years. You can sort of extrapolate the rest from here. Finally, we ran a quick poll of our audience on Twitter finding that most of you maximally load your systems for four hours per day, with many chiming in that a two-hour load is also likely, though Twitter only lets us do so many options. Here's a look at how much extra the V56 costs per year over five years versus a GTX 1070, using that four-hour-per-day stat for the calculation and assuming it's idle the rest of the time or doing things like web browsing. We max out at $120 extra over a five-year period if running stock, or $130 overclocked. Again, the biggest assumption here is that we're at 12 cents per kilowatt hour cost and assuming that the system is idle under the other 20 hours per day. So at this point, what you want to do is take your own cost for electricity. If you don't know it, you can find them online per region pretty easily and calculate based on that. Uh, so the big thing is we've given you the numbers you could use. If you wanted to calculate this yourself, there are kilowatt hour cost calculators out there that will do the work for you. You type in how many hours it will run. In our case, that was 24 down to 4. And then you type in these numbers. So for stock, the RX Vega 56 in 3D Mark Fire Strike was drawing 90 watts more power than the 1070. So you would type in 91 times however many hours. And the output is the delta. That means how much more it costs than a 1070, not how much it costs total. You'll pay a lot more total because you've got the whole rest of the computer to pay for but we're looking at more than a 1070 here, as in video card to video card comparison. That's the first one. If you want to guess for idle or calculate it, you put in 9 watts at the same however many hours it would be idle, and that's the extra power consumption there. If you're overclocked, we found 106 watts more than the overclocked 1070 reference. That'll change if you do aftermarket or after add and board cards from add and board partners. And then finally, the... Uh, other difference was 46 watts more Vega 56 when it was overpowered 50% and undervolted versus a 1070, which was not undervolted but was overclocked. So not the most linear comparison, but if you're planning to do undervolting, you can calculate it that way. So that'll give you the tools to do this yourself for your own costs. I know some people, for example, in Australia have an insane electricity cost compared to here where we're at about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. But... How much this matters really depends on the region. I'm not going to tell you if it's a lot or little because I, I'm not going to sit here and calculate it for every single region. And also, frankly, the amount that it matters really depends on your situation a lot because let's say we're looking at a high number, two or $300 over three years cost of ownership extra to buy Vega. Well, that may really matter to some people. Maybe $300 more means they buy a 1070 instead. Alternatively, if you don't have the money now, then it might matter more to you now to buy the card that whichever comes out to be cheaper. We don't know if it'll be 56 yet. Depends on what happens with pricing at launch. But let's just assume some things here. If you're assuming that you save money with one card, but you spend more over time, how much that matters, just, again, depends on how much money you have now and if it makes more financial sense for you to spend it today or for you to spend it later over a period of X years. So that's up to you. But we've given you some info. I just thought it was kind of interesting to point it out because everyone's talking about power consumption, but that it kind of gets out of hand what that means without relating it back to money, which is ultimately a large part of what matters outside of arguments that we're not going to get into, like uh, energy efficiency overall or a carbon footprint or things like that. We're, we're staying away from those, but you have the rest of the numbers. So as always, thank you for watching. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus stops out directly. You can find the full review for Vega on the channel. We also did a live under undervolting and overclocking demo archived on the channel now and uh, a teardown. So check all those out. GamersNexus.squarespace.com to pick up a shirt like this one. This is the anniversary edition. Thank you all for, for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.